One thing we do a lot of in our consulting work is really highlight findings using various aesthetic properties. One that we found is particularly useful that people don't use that often is shadows. Let me show you how you can use shadows to make your findings really clear to your reader. What you're looking at here is a report that we made for the World Health Organization. This is a report for Afghanistan, but we actually made this for multiple countries. The page you're looking at here shows how well Afghanistan has controlled various vaccine preventable diseases. And you can see that we are using shadow behind Afghanistan to really bring it out so a reader who's looking at this report will easily be able to find Afghanistan. We did this for every country that we worked with. Here you're looking at the report for Ethiopia. You can see how Ethiopia is really highlighted here, again, using shadow. The way we add shadows is using the GGFX package. I'll show you how this works, but first, let me show you how to make the basic maps that we use in these reports. So to do this, I'm gonna begin by loading the tidyverse package for general data wrangling, as well as plotting with ggplot, and then the SF package, which we'll use for working with geospatial data. Next, I'm gonna import my data on rubella. So if I pop this up here, you can see I've got country, region, status, and then I've got this geometry column because this is geospatial data. Next, I'm gonna make a separate data frame for region zero and region one. Let me make each of those data frames and then I'll talk about what they are. So first is region zero. Now when I do that, then I can plot this. So I, you can see here, starting on line 13, I'm gonna plot region zero with the geom sf function. And so there we go. Now what you can see in this map is that region zero are all the kind of surrounding countries. We're focused on region one, which is the World Health Organization's region known as the Eastern Mediterranean. But in the map, we also want to show the surrounding countries, and these are, in our data, region zero. Next, I want to make a data frame for region one. Before I do that, though, check this out. I am going to use ST drop geometry on line 22, and then I'm going to filter to keep region one. Dropping the geometry will just get rid of that geospatial data. It'll just make it easier to take a look at. Then I'm going to count status. Now, if I look at my result here, you can see I've got the status of achieved, no data, and then not achieved. But if you were paying really close attention, you might remember that in our maps, we actually had four statuses, achieved, reestablished, not achieved, and no data. Now, it just happens that in region one, we don't have that reestablished status for any country. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add it manually. To do that, I'm gonna now create a rubella region one data frame. I'm gonna take rubella, then filter for region one. Then I'm gonna use the add row function on line 29. I'm gonna say status equals reestablished. This will just add a row with the status of reestablished, which will be useful for when we plot. Next, I'm gonna convert status into a factor. I'm using the FCT function from the forecats package, and I'm specifying my levels, achieved, reestablished, not achieved, and no data. And that's important because that's the order we want our legend to be in. I'll run that. And now let's look again at our data. I'm gonna start with rubella region one. I'm gonna drop the geometry and count status. If I take a look at it, you can see I've got all four statuses, which is exactly what I want. Next, I'll go ahead and plot region one. When I do that, you'll see that this has all of the countries in region one, the Eastern Mediterranean region. Now this looks a little odd because it's kind of missing countries, right? But if we combine region zero and region one, watch what happens. Now we've got all the countries in that vicinity, but we're highlighting the countries in region one. Now ggplot's using default colors here, but we wanted to actually use the colors of the WHO. So next thing I'm gonna do is I am going to use scale fill manual here. And you can see that I'm saying, if it's achieved, we'll make it navy. If it's reestablished, we'll use gold one, not achieved, red two, and no data will be gray 80. We actually use slightly different colors, but this is just a simple way to do it. There we go, now you can see we have those colors. Next, I'm just gonna make a few tweaks to the theme. So if I go down here, you can see 
I'm using theme void. I don't need like the grid lines. I don't need to see the longitude and latitude. Theme void will allow us to remove all that. And then we can also set the base family of intertight, which is a, a font that I use a lot for plotting. Then I'll make some additional tweaks using the theme function. And if I run this, you can see our plot. Let me move this over slightly. And there we go. Okay, we have kind of the basic plot. Let me actually turn this into a function. So here, starting on line 123, you've got a function called region map. And I've just taken that exact code that I just ran and I've put it within that function. So I'm gonna go down here, run this. And just to show you, if I run region map, it's the exact same thing. In fact, I can even remove that plot. Let me go over here, run it again, and there you go. Okay, now that we've done that, I'm gonna add the shadow. I'm gonna load the ggfx package. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a layer on top of our region map function. So on line 162, you can see I've got the with shadow function. This function is from the ggfx package and you wrap it around another geom. So in my case, you can see I'm wrapping it around geom SF where data equals rubella and then filtering to just show Afghanistan. You can see some additional arguments. Sigma controls the kind of blur look. X offset and Y offset determine the distance from the original geom that your shadow will be. So if I run this, take a look at Afghanistan and you can see it's got a shadow added. Now that's a good start, but a lot of times when we make a map or a chart like this, we'll add additional aesthetic properties in order to really highlight, in this case, the country even more. Let me show you how I do that. Okay, so here is my code and take a look at lines 178 and 179. You can see I've got line width 0.8 and color equals white. Watch what happens when I run this. It adds a white border around Afghanistan with a line width of 0.8. So you can see now that Afghanistan is really visible and a reader who's just kind of scrolling through the report will be much more likely to see it. There's one additional aesthetic property that we used in order to highlight Afghanistan even more when making this map. Specifically, what we did is we kind of faded the countries in the background in order to make Afghanistan stand out even more. To do that, I'm gonna take my region map function and I'm gonna add an argument called opacity level. You can see that on line 186. I've set the default to be one, but you can of course adjust this. And this shows up on line 199 where it says alpha equals opacity level. And note that this is for rubella region one. So what will happen is when we run region map and we set the opacity, countries in region one will be faded a bit. Let me show you how this works. Let me just go ahead and run region map opacity level 0.25. So see how those countries are quite faded at this point? That's actually probably a bit much. Let me now adjust this and run it. I'll just do this and show it with 0.75. Now that looks pretty good. Now the real difference you'll see though is when I add Afghanistan. So let me run this whole thing and see how Afghanistan is just a bit brighter. So it really pops. And that combination of a shadow, an outline, and the opacity on the background layer really helps to bring out Afghanistan. So I've given you a walkthrough of how this works when making a map, but you can use this technique of adding shadows for any geom that you're using. So next time you're making a bar chart, a line chart, a scatter plot, and you have anything that you want to highlight, try adding a shadow with the ggfx package.